Hello, my name is Lynn Harrod and I'm a third year engineering student at Jesus College, Oxford. In this series, I will attempt to clear up any mystery that surrounds the physics aptitude test and offer advice and some helpful resources that will help you put your best foot forward when applying to Oxford. PAT stands for Physics Aptitude Test. This is the two hour paper that you will need to take if you intend to apply for physics, engineering science, material science, or any joint course relating any of these subjects, for example, physics and philosophy. I would like to stress that the PAT is Oxford specific, meaning if you're applying for any of these subjects in another university, you will need to check their websites for any admissions tests or things that they may require of you. This video will focus on the PAT, so if you need to take a different admissions test, this video may not be for you. That being said, there will likely be a lot of crossover in the content between your admissions test and the PAT, um, so you may find the rest of the series more helpful. So I won't be offended if you click off this video and hop on to the next one. I look forward to seeing you there. So depending on whether your school has hosted admissions tests before or not, uh, the procedure may be slightly different for you. The test is run by the CAAT, or Cambridge Assessment Admissions Testing. So you will need to check that your school is a test centre via their website. Follow www.admissionstesting.org slash find-a-centre to find somewhere near you uh, where you can take your test. If there are no good options nearby, don't worry, your school can apply for your test centre, just speak to your head of sit form. And please make sure that you plan ahead of time and apply. If you don't take this test, then you will not be considered for these subjects at Oxford. So the syllabus can be found on the Physics Department's PAT website. Admittedly, the syllabus is rather vague, but it will give you a general idea of the topics that you need to know for this test. There are seven sections to the syllabus. Uh, elementary Mathematics, Calculus, Mechanics, Waves and Optics, Electricity and Magnetism, The Natural World, and the vaguest of them all, <laughs> Problem Solving. In the next few lessons, I will try to break these down um, and give an idea of what you'd be expected to know. What you'll need to take with you to the test will vary from year to year, uh, so be sure to check the website for any details on calculators or tables or things that you might need to bring with you. Without a doubt, you'll need a pen and a pencil every year, so make sure you have a pen and a pencil. Um, you'll need a ruler for graph drawing, uh, and you may want to think about bringing a protractor or a compass for geometry questions. Um, like I said, it can change year to year what you need to bring, so some years you may need a calculator and other years you may not need a calculator, um, so be sure to check the website. If you're a year where you do need a calculator, please check the website to make sure that your calculator falls within the specifications. The website will update every year with information on the date of the test, uh, and what you're allowed to bring with you, so please, please check the website. <laughs> Preparing for the PAT will be different for everyone. Some people may need longer to revise and take notes, and others may need longer to practice uh, papers and questions. My general advice would be not to dwell too much on taking notes, as you won't be allowed to take these in with you. So do practice. Uh, attempting questions without having notes in front of you. The most productive revision for most will be from past papers. Unfortunately, Oxford do not release official uh, past paper solutions. However, you can find written solutions online um, on websites such as physicsandmathstutor.com and oxfordpat.wordpress.com. But again, these are not official solutions released by Oxford. The PAT website has a list of useful resources under the useful websites and resources for the PAT tab. I would recommend that you check these out. And lastly, I would recommend that you take a look at a book called Professor Povey's Perplexing Problems. This book is written by an engineering lecturer here at the University of Oxford who took the PAT himself um, and has a compilation of PAT style questions ranging in difficulty. I think the most common problem that students face in taking this test would be running out of time. Two hours may seem like a lot of time, but the questions can be lengthier than they look. The best way to tackle this issue is to practice under timed conditions, uh, to work out which method will gain you the most marks. For some, securing marks in the multiple choice section first and then moving on to the longer questions may be beneficial, 
and for others going on to the longer questions first and then spending five minutes on the uh, multiple choice at the end. Uh, just having a random stab at them would be helpful. So do make sure that you practice and see which method gains you the most marks. It is generally wise to answer the questions that you're most uh, comfortable with first. So if you prefer maths, then it might be worth zipping over to the maths questions first and getting those done and gaining secure marks there. And if you prefer physics, then it's probably best for you to start with the physics questions. Each student will be different. So again, practice and find what works for you. In my opinion, the second greatest pitfall would be rushing uh, and misreading and misunderstanding the questions. Be sure that you thoroughly read the question um, and that you understand what the examiner wants as an answer um, and be sure to check for any hints that you might find in the question. Some students may prefer to read ahead on questions before they answer them um, and think about them while they're answering different questions and then others may prefer to just focus on one question at a time so just see how your brain works the best. One piece of advice I would give is to avoid answering your questions in order. Don't go question one, question two, question three, question four. Like I said, pick an order that works the best for you. Lastly, the greatest exam sin would be not to write anything at all. Don't do this. <laughs> if you write nothing, you get nothing. If you write down some key equations relating to the problem, you might get a few marks. So please try and don't leave anything blank. I hope this video has been a helpful introduction to the PAT uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video where I'll be talking about elementary mathematics.